Hello and welcome to another update video. And as you can see it's really cold in here. About 2 degrees Celsius actually. It's not really fun at the moment to work here. Well, however, I have been taking on two different projects that are, well, quite closely related actually. Here on the right hand side we have the most primitive type of AC stick welder. And I bought this for around 25 euros. And it's exactly the same type of machine that I took apart about two years ago in one of my earlier episodes. And, well, I made a lengthy episode about that. This time it's not about a teardown, but about the possibilities to upgrade this cheapest kind of welding machine. Now, as I said, it only delivers AC and it can only run at its rated current for a very limited amount of time. Those are the maybe the two main things that we're going to change. So add a high current rectifier to this machine and then maybe filter the output current, find new ways of adjusting the output current and then trying to use this for other welding processes. So there are a bunch of possibilities there. And in a very similar way I'm also trying now to finally build my own current source for a welding machine from these salvage transformers here. People call these MOTs or MOTs, that's, that's what the internet says. And uh, that's for microwave oven transformer because these are salvaged from older microwave ovens. So what's going to happen here is that I'm going to, well, modify these transformers and then get to the point where we have another AC current source. And from that point on, the upgrades for this machine and for that self-made mod welder will be practically the same. That's why these projects work alongside each other. What we can see here are a couple of things that I've bought in order to figure out how to you know, film the welding arc itself because that's something that I haven't really done. Even though I've made many videos with my welding machines, I never really spent the time figuring out how you can actually use a normal uh, DSLR like this um, to actually get a good view on the arc itself. And there's something that we will just have to do in order to see the difference, for example, between AC and DC welding and the quality difference that we might get from filtering or stabilizing the actual welding current. Over here we have um, two large uh, ammunition boxes uh, from the German armed forces and they will serve as the enclosure for the self-made mod welder. One of them is not uh, going to be big enough, that's why I bought two of these. And if you're looking for a really rugged enclosure for something at a comparatively low price, then looking for ammo boxes might be the way to go. Now in here we have a couple more uh, components that I will use in this project. Now, what do we have here? Let's take a look at that label. Oops. Or this one maybe. And I don't know if you can read that. But there it says Halbleiter Diode, that means like just like semiconductor diode. And then down there, Wegmann und Co. Kassel. And I don't know if you ever heard of Wegmann, maybe you know Kraus Maffei, Kraus Maffei, Wegmann um, is a uh, arms manufacturer and they're, well these days they're building um, tanks I guess. Back in the day Wegmann used to build railroad trains and it just so happens that uh, these here popped up on eBay. And these are uh, 300 ampere um, diodes. Branded International Rectifier, this might be originally from United States and there we have a date code, I guess, I mean 1980, maybe 21st week or something. And typically these types of diodes I think are around 50 or 60 euros upwards for one. I know I got them for 10 bucks. And uh, we'll see if we can use them uh, as our rectifiers. Now. What about the mods, the microwave oven transformers themselves? I'm sure that um, quite a lot of you have seen 
whole lot of different welding projects on YouTube or on other websites where people have made these modifications because that's something that has been going on at least for 15 years or so and what people typically do is to use jumper cables like these ones here or at least you know copper wire with uh, very thick insulation and well hopefully uh, a lot of conductive cross-section area or like wire gauge as you see in, say in America and well what people basically do is they take one of these mods let's take a closer look at that and what you'll find is a primary winding that's what's attached to the mains voltage then in here we have two little magnetic shunts we have a low voltage heater winding that's for the heating fi uh, filament of the magnetron in the microwave oven and then we have a third winding and that's a high voltage secondary you can see here that it's also attached to the magnetic core of the transformer on one side and that is used to actually power the magnetron well while welding however you're not interested in high voltages but in high currents and that is why people typically just remove these secondary windings and well leave the core intact and then they will just insert these jumper cables or well high gauge wires or whatever and well practically use them to just wind a new secondary and what you can also do is to open the core and then it's a little easier to access that and you can maybe guess how I meant that well however you know that I'm not very fond of just copying other people's ideas and that's why I have been trying to come up with another mes uh, method of uh, winding these secondary windings and here is uh, the first of the transformers that have actually successfully converted to a high current design and it's still held together by these wooden clamps because I had to cut open uh, the seams, the, these welds here on the sides and here you can see a secondary winding just wound from metal strips that are insulated against each other and against the uh, primary winding of course by just captain tape and this is going to hum a little bit it's actually quite loud that's also just because of the desk and um, well, this is not turned on anymore. So we have an open circuit voltage here of around 9 volts and that's of course a little... Well, that's not, not really enough, uh, I guess, to build a functioning stick welder. But what other people have done and what I will do is to just uh, connect a bunch of secondaries in series so we are going to use probably eight nine or ten of these transformers then hook the primaries up in parallel and then connect the secondaries in series and then a bridge rectifier for in this case 300 amps that won't be necessary but well better it's better if, if it can handle a little more than is needed right so that's what we're going to do and yeah, a couple more salvage parts there that we will probably use in this project. So I was actually hoping to get this done a little quicker, but as I mentioned, it's extremely cold in here and I cannot spend more than a few hours here each day. And well, I'll do my best to get it done in the next week. See you soon.